The tale of the Frost Giant's daughter comes to an end when Conan is attacked by the Aesir, who believes he isn't worthy of being touched by Atali. Has Conan finally found his faith, or will his reliance and strength and steel be his only comfort? Let's find out in Conan the Barbarian number 16 from Titan Comics. See you in three. Welcome back to Comic Club Opinions. This is our review of Conan the Barbarian number 16. The final chapter in writer Jim's adaptation of The Frost Giant's Daughter comes to a close with a brutal fight, deep introspection, there's a lot of it here, and a choice that only a man in search of his faith can make. Conan the Barbarian number 16 trades deep, thought-provoking ideas for a bold spectacle, but this finale is no less powerful. Before we dig in, let's recap what happened last time. When last we left the Sumerian in Conan the Barbarian number 15, Conan pursued the beautiful daughter of the Acerman's god, Ymir, after his bloody battle against the rival Vanir clan. Before Conan's lust drove him mad, the princess's father intervened. The issue ended with Njord and the Acer tribe finding Conan lost in the frozen wilderness, but he still held the proof that the princess was real, not a hallucination. And that brings us to the current issue. In Conan the Barbarian number 16, we pick up with Conan resting in the Acer war camp after he was found wandering in the icy wastelands. He still holds the gossamer scarf taken from Atali, and his mind wanders back to his time as a boy when his father taught him about Krom's presence in the world. He was a young blacksmith along with his father, and the two of them discussed how much Krom affects their world, even though as a young boy, he didn't quite believe it. Writer Jim Sub starts the issue on a pensive note when Conan begins to complete the picture in his troubled mind about the existence of a spiritual world. His memories of his father's teaching about faith as an empowering choice take on a new light. In other words, his father taught him that faith is a choice, and through that choice, that gives you power, even if the thing that you're putting your faith in doesn't have the power that you're looking for in big magical shows and big spectacle. Soon, Gorm approaches Conan with a bowl of stew to help the barbarian regain his strength. The old Acer recalls catching a glimpse of Atali during a heated battle in his younger years, but to touch the princess of a god is a prize to envy by all of the Acer men. Conan agrees and leaves the circle of fire to contemplate Atali's memory, which still clings to him like the scent of a perfume or the sound of a bell that just won't go away. Unsurprisingly, touching the divine has a deep impact on Conan. Jim Zub doesn't try to gloss over the encounter or the lasting weight of Conan's encounter with Atali. Conan's brush with gods profoundly changes him and his worldview in a fundamental way, as it would with anyone. So Zub's choice to have Conan linger on the memory makes him a deeper character and someone who's more authentic and more real in the sense of a person who goes through all the things we encounter on a daily basis. As Conan strolls through the woods, he's suddenly hit on the back of the head by the drunken Osman. The Acer warrior believes Conan isn't as worthy as himself and his men to have contact with Atali. Enraged at the perceived slight, Osman attacks Conan with an axe. Fueled by the knowledge that the answers he seeks are within reach, Conan challenges Osman to do his worst, leading to a brutal fight to the death. The issue ends with the proclamation of a curse, Conan's father relaying the reality of faith, and Conan making an informed choice. Overall, Conan the Barbarian number 16 ends Conan's search for faith with a thought-provoking message about the meaning of life and the choices we make to find it. Jim Zub masterfully maintains the spirit of Robert E. Howard's original story about the Frost Giant's daughter while adding a fresh perspective that bristles with lasting ideas and rich complexity. This is the type of story that after you read it, it sits with you and it gets you to think and it makes you wonder how it applies to your own life. And in my book, there's no better way to compliment a story than that. Let's switch gears and talk about the art for a second. Doug Braithwaite's art style immaculately portrays the deep internal struggle felt by Conan and, to a lesser degree, his father in flashbacks as stern, hard men who look for answers to the mystical aspects of life. To pull this finale off, Braithwaite has to make you believe every moment, particularly between young Conan and his father, when their questions of faith are shared and examined and, to a certain degree, debated. Braithwaite's talent for detailed figure work and beautiful landscapes is still on full display, but the saddened look in Conan's father's eyes hit the high point of this issue. Let's take a step back and look at the big picture. If it wasn't obvious from this description, this third arc in the Conan the Barbarian series is a loose adaptation of the original story titled 
The Frost Giant's Daughter, published originally by Robert E. Howard. That said, the daughter in question was not named Atali in the story's first published iteration. There have been republications since. The first version of the story was titled The Gods of the North, and the ethereal woman Conan pursued in the original published version was named Amra. Final thoughts, what do we think about Conan the Barbarian number 16 from Titan Comics? It ends the loose adaptation of the Frost Giant's daughter as Conan comes to terms with his brush with divinity. Brimming with fantastic art from Doug Braithwaite, and it looks amazing, and deeply inspired ideas from Jib Zub, this series has yet to miss the mark. And I will say this, it's one thing to have good ideas, it's something else to execute them correctly. Jim Zub is doing both, and he deserves all the praise he's going to get for it. Therefore, Conan the Barbarian number 16 earns a 9.5 out of 10. In a sea of terrible comics, and we got a lot of them, all Conan titles coming from Titan since they acquired the license are winners. But what do you think? Are you enjoying the Conan titles from Titan so far? Leave a thumbs up if you are, and drop a comment below with which Robert E. Howard character deserves at least a miniseries. My money's still on Solomon Kane. Also, remember to click on the link in the description to read the written review, check out the varying covers and preview pages, and buy this comic to help support the channel. Your support is, of course, greatly appreciated. So thank you very much for joining, and stay tuned through the outro for more reviews just like this one.